So good morning, good morning, Kern Machinery. Thank you so much. Thank you for, so much for having me here. It's my good pleasure. And uh, so we're gonna go through the exact harvesting pieces that are here. This is our 1160 um, sweeper. It's the final tier four uh, version. And so when we had to go through the engine uh, uh, redesign package for uh, uh, having the emit new emission systems on there, we actually did quite a few other improvements on the sweeper. And um, up here in the front, you'll see that we've got a burn brush on the head. Actually, Exact was the innovator of putting the burn brush on the sweeper back in the day. Um, this attachment right here, about 3,000 bucks, actually increases the overall capacity or the sweeping productivity about 10 to 20 percent. Everybody is doing burn brushes now, okay? But I'll, I'll just try to highlight some of the things that Exact brought in to the industry as an innovation. So we, they were the first guys to put a burn brush on a sweeper. Um, this is a really a good system and it's probably the most forgiving for uh, the downside of burn brushes is you got the drip lines, especially if they got double line, uh, double line drips, okay? The burn brushes, you don't wanna be running those over. You gotta keep them out of the way. So this is the most forgiving where you can touch the, the, the drip line just a little bit, but still stay off of it, not wrap it up. Um, this is a six and a half foot head. That's the most common uh, configuration. Uh, you can go from a 20 foot out all the way out to 24 foot spacings. And the reason we're able to do that, we got a narrow head and with our offset, which our offset with our head in the machine is actually a little different than the way our uh, brand X does it. This is on a hydraulic cylinder and you can move it from inside the cab. Okay, to change your actual sweeping width. So that's how we can go from 20 to 24s. 21s, 22s are probably the most common. Um, also what Exact has done, uh, let's say the last four years, so they started in the 1155 model and continued on with the 1160. This is a full floating head. So full, full floating head means all of the, when, when I lower the head and I drop it down into um, a harvest position, all the way to the head is riding on these two gauge wheels. You can adjust the height with these uh, jack screws so that you get your wires just off the orchard floor. You don't want them digging, you don't want them touching, but you do want them fairly close, let's say within an eighth of an inch. A lot of growers tell me, how do I get, you know, we're going into a, doing a demo or maybe he's got some challenges with too much dirt. And he says, how, how can I, how can I get this dirt out of my windrows so I'm not picking up all that dirt with my harvesters? And the answer is, it's really only about a quarter of an inch. You got to keep those wires very close to about an eighth of an inch on that orchard floor. And so as the conditions in the field change, um, a floating head allows you to get your mechanical adjustment. And then as things change in the field, it allows the head to float and change with those conditions. I'll tell you a little story. This, uh, um, uh, this was last year and uh, there was a, a guy that was using our harvester. He liked exact products. He says, I wanna see your sweeper. Some of the, um, the growth in our uh, almond industry is actually going into farmland that isn't flat. He says, I've got orchards that actually have contours like this contours like this and contours that go up and down on the same row. It's a challenge to get my sweepers adjusted because the, the conditions are constantly changing. We showed him the, the, the full floating head, got it adjusted for him, showed the operator. Um, he loved the machine, he bought six of them. Says he's never had as clean a sweeping job with any other products, and he tried them all. So a full floating head is, is a, a, an, event, an uh, innovation Exact's bringing into the market. If you just generally look at how Exact builds their equipment, they don't cheapen things up with lighter steel. I mean, they're very, very heavy built machines. A lot of thick metal, um, maybe in farmer terms, overbuilt, but they like it that way. Uh, we also put the blower up here in the front, 
okay? And it's purposely done that way so that the driver is able to see his blowing job and see the finished work of his blower, okay? Because he's blowing the, the, the distance in between the trees that you can't get with your sweeper. And he's seeing what he's doing. He can actually adjust the angle and the, the, uh, the RPMs of the impeller, which is the amount of velocity of air coming out right from inside the cab. So he's seeing that looking out sideways or front or sideways from his window versus the competitors where you have to look back through that dirty airstream. So a lot more difficult to see what you're doing and get your machine adjusted. Um, the driver sits right here. So you do have a perception difference between where the driver's sitting in the front of the head because of our front location of the blower. It's actually very easy to get yourself um, accustomed to that difference because the driver is sitting in the center of where the back wheel is. So kind of imagine yourself being in the center of this thing that does this when you turn. It's actually very intuitive. So. Um, yeah, the first few rows, the guy's gonna feel like, you know, it's a little different than brand X. But you can quickly adjust to that because of the, the center placement of the, uh, of the driver with the machine front to back. Um, another thing that Exact brought in when they started building sweepers, um, you know, more than 10 years ago, we brought in the, what we call the hair windows. It's actually another manufacturer. Now hair is no longer uh, in business, so they were bought out. But these are high impact windows. They don't break. They're half inch thick, laminated. Um, uh, they're guaranteed for limb breakage for five years. Many of the Brand X companies are doing that now, but you know, 10 years ago, that was an innovation again that Zach brought into the um, nut harvesting equipment industry. Uh, very low profile. So we're trying to minimize the, the scraping of the nuts through the orchard and um, uh, engines in the back. We have a, uh, uh, it's a three wheel steer machine. If you just stand here and look at the back of this machine and compared to some of our other competitors, you'll just see a lot of heavy built iron. Um, it's very common to go up to Brand X and see where they've either backed into something or they've hit that pothole or uh, that ditch one too many times, and actually the back wheel, the steering axle, is, is bent. You're not gonna bend this one. It's heavy, heavy. We'll, we'll use the farmer term, overbuilt. Uh, serviceability on a machine is really good with the engine configuration the way it is. Um, your routine service is on this side of the engine where your air cleaner, checking your oil, um, and doing your daily maintenance. Uh, there is a removable panel behind the seat, so if, uh, if you do have to do a service on the, um, uh, the turbocharger or, or get a little bit more in depth. You'll notice that the exact sweeper has the door on the right side of the sweeper. Again, that was another innovation that exact brought into the industry. Most everybody else had their door on that side, like a conventional left-hand driving car. Um, and so when you're in the shop, not a big deal. I can open a door, get out. The reality is this is a sweeper. It runs in an orchard. And when you're sweeping in an orchard, you've got a whole row of trees right along that side of the, of the machine. So to be able to open that door and possibly get out, clear a drip line, maybe pull a branch or something, um, you know, it's not the funnest thing. You may be tearing the shirt. You know, the driver has more difficulty getting in and out of the machine to do something. So we put the door over here. The, uh, the other tree row is, is significantly over there, so it gives you just a lot of room to be able to get out and do something while you're doing your sweeping. Clear some drip line, move a tree limb. Um, looking at the cab, it's a very well laid out, uh, intuitive, uh, operational for the controls. It's also one of the largest cabs as far as just giving lots of room and space inside. Um, you can carry some hydration, keep some water, maybe some snacks or whatever you might need. We've got a cup holder. Um, and so incorporated with the 1160, we also went to a computer controlled 
um, hydraulic system. And so what that allows us to do from an engineering standpoint is just put, build a lot of features into the machine that are hydraulically operated much easier and sometimes we're doing things that are just not possible with cable operated controls. Um, so an example is, is now we have a button on our joystick control that shuts the blower on and off. So we do have a control that says how, how much RPM I want on my blower. And these blowers have a lot of force, okay? Cranked up wide open, sometimes you're gonna be overblowing and you do need to dial it back. So we've got a, um, um, we have a sensor on there that's saying what the RPM of that blower is. And it's got, it's on the, the computer screen, it reads it out. So wide open, that blower can run 3,000, 3,200 RPM, okay? So when you're making an open and pass on that sweeper, um, you know, you're gonna have it cranked up probably uh, wide open or uh, thereabouts. When you come around on your other cleanup pass on the other side of the tree row, that's gonna be too much air, okay? So when you're coming around making that cleanup pass, I'm just gonna use a number. Maybe he's kind of, the, the operator's got a feel for it. Maybe about 1,500. He's got a, um, an RPM gauge on the blower. And then if you've got a fleet of machines that are running together, the guy can say, hey, open up full, you know, close it at 1,500. So it's repeatable. It's repeatable. And all you do is turn your machine on and hit the button. If that makes sense. Um, um, it also, we also have fuel gauges and a lot of other uh, high-tech features that <laughs> we probably uh, um, have been asked to put in the machine. So this does have that. Um, we've got a larger fuel tank, so we have a 10 plus hour run now. And uh, the 55s really were about 7.99 hours of running time. So we got a lot longer run time before you have to refuel. And um, we have a backup camera so that the operator can actually see behind him and as well as, uh, you know, load it on the trailer. These things, if you're putting it on the trailer to, to, to run uh, or, you know, transport, it's better to actually have them backed onto the trailer so that the wind going down the freeway or, or on the roads doesn't tear off all your rubber dust flaps. So it works better to back them on. I use the, I use the backup camera, just the back, I don't even look back. Look at the camera and I back it right on the trailer. Centered right here on the center where the dry or the steer, rear steering wheel is. Um, and I'll put it right there within an inch where I need to be every time. Uh, serviceability for cl cleaning it on your daily. Very dusty conditions, so you gotta be able to open these things up, click, and do your blow down um, and keep all these. Uh, this is your air conditioner your hydraulic uh, cooler, and then your radiator. These areas are gonna plug up with dust and leaves, so you gotta be able to open this stuff up quickly, get it blowed out, close it back up, and keep running. Um, I don't think you can get any better than this, than what we have. And then we also have a reverser, and so uh, it's set up for uh, every 15 minutes, it runs for 15 seconds. And it, as you're going down through the orchard, it automatically re reverses the fan blades, blows everything this way. Flex there, fan. Yeah. Um, you know, we. You your sweeper is your adjustability too. You have inside your cab for adjustability. Yeah. So we do have. Um, Flow controls that are on the uh, lower part of the dash. So the, the hydraulics for this machine are actually on a, a valve bank underneath the covers here. So we can adjust the, the reel speed, the speed of the, of the brush, and or um, if we do have the other attachments, which is not on this machine, but this is our closing arm. It bolts on here. We've got an auger um, and it goes over there so you can individually adjust those speeds. I like to pump them up to 40 pounds. You know what it's? What's that? The head and the sweeper wheels? The head wheels too? Yeah. 
You know, it's a, it's a common thing that guys are saying, you know, it, it, it's more on the harvesters than it actually is on the sweeper. But a guy says, you know, I'm, I'm digging on this end and I'm having trouble over here and I, you know, I can't keep my head on my pickup set right. You go out there and it's literally, he's just got three wheels, three tires, that the air pressure is correct and he's got one that's just a little bit low. There's not a significant amount of weight where that looks like it's flat, but what it does is it actually, the harvester does this going through the field. It's kind of like, have you ever taken your wife to dinner and you're sitting there and it's a table and chair type setup and you put your arm on it and the table is doing this and she puts her arm on it and it tilts that way. It's the same thing that harvester doing when you don't have even distribution holding the weight of the machine. So pump them up 40 pounds, you know, you're good to go. Uh, this does have a road gear in it too for transporting. Um, it'll go up to 20 miles an hour. Frankly, you know, on, on the roads in Kern County, <laughs> uh, 20 miles an hour, that's pretty fast. So um, faster than you probably need to be going all the time with a machine that doesn't have uh, suspensions. But that's pretty much it on sweepers. Do we have any questions or? Yeah, so it's all cable operated um, and it's non-computer controlled. So um, the computer controls it allows us to have all those features that we talked about, about repeatable, uh, repeatability for the settings for the blower and knowing what the blower speed is versus just kind of pushing a lever and looking out the window and saying, I think that's about where I had it before. Okay, now you can say, hey, I put it at 1500 or put it at 3000 and it's repeatable, and it's also repeatable from machine to machine. So it kind of takes that subjective feel part of it out. Is this extra skirting new on the side? Love the longer skirt. Yeah, so we've actually doubled up some of those areas, and um, yeah, just to give it longer, longer run time in the field. See, one of the questions we get asked the most is how to set the head. Can you get into some detail about the angle of the head? I know you talked about it being a quarter inch off the ground. Yeah, but quarter inch. Adjusting the head. Yeah, so, so. Because that's one of the questions we get asked most frequently. So it takes no tools, guys. It takes no tools. All right, so all the weight of the machine is actually pushed down on this. So these, these jack screws are a little tight right now. You just raise the head just a little bit. Um, and you can adjust these very easily with, without any wrenches, okay? One turn is about uh, uh, a sixteenth of an inch, okay? And it has a little lock feature here, so as you're going down through the orchard, it's not gonna just self-turn itself. Um, so really the way to do this, the way to set up the machine initially, if it's never been in the field, is it's, it's great to actually do it in the shop like this. And you'll set that, um, those tines, okay, so that you've got it nice and flat on a nice flat surface. You're going to set those about an eighth of an inch off the concrete. Once you get it in the field, it's going to change a little bit because of the compaction of the dirt and every field's a little different. So you'll make some minor adjustments, but you're not going to be cranking, 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 okay? So setting that, <clears throat> that initial, let's say, eighth of an inch or so across. The, when I say tines, I'm talking about the wires, the rakes. <clears throat> you want to rotate that head so it's at the very lowest point, uh, point. Get those wires set, okay, at your, at your height. Then you're going, to, um, you're going to go over to your brush, okay, and then you're going to set all this. So you have a lot of different adjustments. This is actually on a float, so that if I do have a, a big hump or something, this thing is going to float up, okay, so we don't dig it into the ground and, and bend something up. But I can raise and lower. Okay, this, this, this piece right here, I can pull these levers and I can rotate this. Okay. Uh, more adjustment is new, yes. So I can also rotate the brush this way as well as I can increase the angle. In other words, nose it down. And the bottom of this, actually a big cone. So I'll flip this up. So see how that big cone is? You don't want that cone riding on the dirt. 
That's there just in case you do hit a big hump of dirt. So you, um, you actually want the front of that cone just off of the dirt and you want the back of it. I mean, I just put my hand underneath there and I could kind of feel it. I want to be able to run my hand all the way across there between the orchard floor and that cone. What percentage would you say if you want to touch the ground? 40%, 50% of the raking angle? Yeah, yeah, about half. So this is actually too high. I wouldn't be doing anything. I'd be missing most of my nuts. But um, yeah, so you want that two inch thick of brush. You want about half of that pushing into the dirt at an angle. And slower is better. It's common for operators to think, I'm gonna do a better job with faster speeds. Actually, it only takes what it takes to move the nuts and every rotation after that by the reel or this brush is just more dirt. That's all you're doing. You already got the nuts. You're just sweeping more dirt. So slower is better. And it's less wear and tear on the machine and the parts. And Most of the service activities are gonna be surrounded back here by the engine. Um, you do have your air filter, this right here. This is a, a, a twin canister, so meaning you have an outer filter and an inner filter. The inner filter is a safety feature. So if I'm pulling this out and I'm gonna replace the filter, the outer filter or clean it, and if I see a bunch of dirt on the inner filter, I definitely don't wanna clean that outer filter and, and put it back in because that means it's got some holes, okay? So that's just a, a warning when they're doing that cleaning, but it's easy to get to, it's right here. Um, you gotta be careful because this has got the uh, uh, emissions regen, so it definitely gets very, very hot. Uh, your fueling is right here. And we put the battery back in the back so it's easy to get to if the guy is leaving the, the key on and he runs it down when they come back to the next shift. If they are doing any work on the machine, especially any welding, it's really important either to disconnect the battery or at least shut the master switch off, okay? Um, if it's a corporate farm, a lot of the corporate farms are starting to do what they call lockout tag out. And so what that means is they got something over here they're working on. The mechanics has got to go back to the shop. They don't want an operator jumping in it and taking off. And so you can actually put your padlock on here and lock it out. The mechanic can so that nobody can accidentally start the machine up and run it. But uh, batteries here in the back. And it's just really important when they're blowing this thing out with their compressed air to get all the nooks and crannies. This engine compartment gets extremely hot and you just don't want any leaves and, and a lot of debris, uh, grass or whatever, getting plugged up and packed into these areas. So you want to blow it out very good. Um, open up the tops, look at it. Blow, 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 blow everywhere you can. Um, Probably the most important thing on this machine is to keep it running cool, is to keep it blowed out. Uh, we do have the reverser fan, so it can do some, um, a certain amount of self-cleaning in between your, your daily major cleaning. Um, and the doors open up. Uh, th this here is actually a, uh, a power hub, so this has got grease. We don't have to do any um, uh, harvesting, um, harvest season maintenance on it. There's no greasing. So there are a couple of grease points um, on the burn brush where that goes in and out and you can keep the jack screws greased so you can be able to adjust your head. Other than that, um, it's a pretty simple machine to run and, and keep it running.